Yarrit the Desecrated, Lands Matter versus Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. Yeah, going for the forest into the exploration and then Field of the Dead to get the Tapland out of the way is the way to go here, I think. And then we can go Snow-Covered Island, Dryad Arbor to knock Summoning Sickness off of that. And then we can go into Code Dharma's Reach. And yeah, it's, it's emptying out our hand, but hopefully we can keep Tatyova in play long enough to... Uh, uh, to get some card draw going. Definitely want to get a swamp here. One, because we don't have black mana, but also because uh, we want to get as many different card names or lands with different card names in play as possible for the Field of the Dead. Now the question is, do we go for Yarrick next turn or Tatyova? If we draw into another land... I'd be tempted to leave the lands in my hand and go for Yarrick instead, and then get both of them down off of Tatyova. We'll see what our opponent does first. Yeah, nature's law. Luckily, they're being much slower than we are. Sisse Weatherlight Captain is three mana in white for a 2 2. Gains plus one plus one for each colour amongst other legendary permanents you control. And then for Wooburg, search your library for a legendary permanent with CMC less than her power and put it into play. There's two lands, so I think I'm going to go for Yarrick here. And then hopefully he sticks around long enough for Tatyova to come down. We can play Tatyova next turn, then make two lands, draw four cards, gain four life. And everything will be fine and dandy from that point out, hopefully. Five mana in Sultai for a 3-5 Death Touch lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes the triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, then that ability triggers an additional time. Hence the reason Tatyova triggers twice off of the Yarrick. And this is the Lands Matter variant of the deck. I have two versions of Yarrick in one versus one. And this is the Lands Matter version that I have just built recently. Let's go in for Tatyova. And we will play the Command Tower. Gain two life and draw two cards, thanks to Yarrick. Ancient Tomb, I don't think is going to be of any use. Uh, but we will uh, we'll play it anyway, just in case we draw into our Wood Elves or something like that. And now Field of the Dead is switched on. So every land that we have come into play will trigger twice and get us two zombies. There's a Tooth and Nail as well, so we could go for, uh, we could go for Avenger of Zendikar. And then play the Avenger of Zendikar and the Regal Force. We'll have to entwine that, which is 9 mana. We've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana next turn. So that's something we can go for. We draw into a Misty Rainforest off of the Selvala Explorer Returned. So that's even more landfall, which is even more card draw for us. We don't necessarily need to go for... That little combination of cards with Tooth and Nail because we've already got a lot of card draw going on right now. Might just be best to set up with the Mana Reflection. And Garrett coming down, probably going to untap some lands I would have thought. I don't actually know what it's blanked that out for, but anyway... I uh, had to mulligan down to five. Yeah, our opponent's saying that they had to mull to five, so it's... Uh, it's pretty rough going for them. Uh, I think we just do some setting up here and go for Mana Reflection. Let's see what we draw into off of our fetch land. We were lucky to have Field of the Dead in our opening hand. Our Villainous Wealth is good off of a Mana Reflection. Let's crack this. And it's more Field of the Dead and Tatyova triggers. Both of those have Landfall. Oh, and then Azusa as well is just... Yeah, that's just crazy. Uh, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we'll have a bunch of mana held up. Yeah, let's go for the mana reflection before anything else. That will double up the mana from all our mana producing permanents. Then we get down Azusa. That's two additional land drops this turn. Play the fetch for even more card draw and zombies. Then crack the fetch, we'll get a an underground tomb here, I think. 
an underground C even, not underground 2. Most tombs are underground, aren't they? We'll play another land. Lotus Cobra is quite nice, that's going to be even more mana for us. And then we will play the Growth Spiral as well. And put a land into play, we'll just go for... the island. And even more land for Lotus Cobra, also triggers twice. Because it triggers from a permanent entry. As do all landfall effects. We'll go green and black. I don't even know what we're doing this turn. Uh, probably just play... Well, there's a guy's Cradle. Yeah, let's play the guy's Cradle. The more zombies we get in play, the better guy's Cradle becomes. And I think we just go in for a Villainous Wealth this turn. That's all the land drops we can make. So let's just go for a Crazy Villainous Wealth. And hope that our opponent doesn't scoop. We're actually going to take most of our opponent's cards from their deck here. I'm glad this isn't a Genesis Wave because 48 is going into X. And I don't want to take 48 cards out of my deck. I'd rather take it out of my opponent's. Okay, look at all that. I'm not even going to bother looking at all this stuff, hopefully. I don't accidentally play something that ends up killing me, like, uh, uh, what is that, Phage the Untouchable or something like that. <laughs> not much chance of that in this deck, but you never know. I think Phage is legendary, actually, isn't it? So maybe. And I'm sure I'm doing all of this in the wrong order as well. Uh, fertile Ground can go on a basic. Yeah, sure, I'm doing it all in the wrong order, but I'm not about to sit here and make my opponent wait for me. Uh, what is that? One with nature, enchant a creature whenever it deals damage to a player, uh, uh, whatever. You can go on the Death Toucher, Black Blade Reforged, Hammer of Nazan. And this is where the order of things is going to come into effect, but I'm not worrying about that. For some reason on Magic Online there isn't an option to just cast everything in whatever order you want. And just let the client worry about it. Which makes a little bit of sense, because the order of all these things being cast does matter. But like I said, I'm not about to start worrying about it here. Alright, finally got the stack up. Uh... We will go for the Kadama's Reach. I don't know if I've got any basics left. Uh, let's just go for a forest there. And we'll put that into play. I don't want another one in my hand. Oh wow, and then this gets a lot more triggers on the go. Yeah, big, big props to my opponent for not scooping through this. I do put in the lobby no early scoops, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people will honour that. And, in all fairness to my opponent, this is a hell of a lot to sit through. But it's just good for the viewers of the channel. We don't like early scoopers. But like I said, I wouldn't exactly count my opponent as an early scooper in this, in this scenario. Because this is pretty obnoxious. All this is occurring on turn 5, don't forget. And then it's a Cultivate, gonna get a bunch more triggers again. That is the last basic in the library. So we don't have to worry about searching for basic lands anymore. Okay, then it's Planeswalkers coming into play. Which should be pretty quick, we should be able to click through all these. Then Legendary Creatures, plus two, plus two, Medomai. Kiora comes down whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters. We draw a card, okay. Just so happened to stack that quite nicely by accident. The Voring Clex comes down and triggers twice. Kiora might actually be a good include in this deck. Shieldra comes down, triggers us twice. Let's see if we mill ourselves here. I don't think we will because there's a bunch of non-creatures coming down as well. In fact, if that's... An ability that we have to do. Let's just auto yield to it. Magic Online is starting to really slow down now. 
Okay, Bruce Tarl, when it enters or attacks, a creature gains double strike. Let's see what we've got. That's two double strikes, so we'll put one on Tatyolva and one on to Yarrick. And Dragon Lord Dramoka comes into play as well, and we get a Shalai, so that will give our stuff hexproof. The weather light comes down. I think that is affected by summoning sickness. Even if we animate it, we can test that theory. The Jitte comes down. We can, yeah, we've put these on in the wrong order, for instance. We could have done with Hammer of Nazan being in first. But like I said, I wasn't about to waste my opponent's time all that much with all this. This is just indestructible, I think. Yeah, plus two, plus zero, and indestructible. We'll put that on our commander. We can equip it twice. And then the Black Blade Reforged comes down. We're going to have a huge commander. I think that's plus one, plus one per land we control. And then the one with Nature Aura comes down. The Fertile Ground comes down. Smothering Tithe comes down. Oh wow, we've got a Sneakborn Muse as well, so we're going to untap during our opponent's turn. I don't think that's going to be relevant, but... Yeah, maybe it will be. The Thalia's Lancers, I cannot remember what that does. But it has an ETB effect. That is Search for a Legendary, is it? Search for a Legendary, yes, it does. Uh, I'm actually not going to bother. We've only got 32 cards left in the deck, and I want to leave as many cards in the deck as possible when we've got this much card draw going. And we'll get a couple of... Mana, Dorks and Rocks, and that will be the end of it. And huge props to our opponent for playing that out, because that took a hell of a long time to get going. Now, I don't think we've got anything else we want to do. Uh, oh, we can Rift, can't we? Yeah, so let's Rift and make sure that our opponent loses. There we go. And then with the Floating Mana, we'll play that Sol Ring. Oh, and accidentally draw another card. Yep. Didn't realise Joyret was on the field. And then we swing in with some zombies and a 23-23 Yarrick that has double strike and is indestructible. And huge props to our opponent. Oh, and our opponent's a friend of the channel, so... Yeah, that's probably why they sat through all that. So a big, big thank you to Terax77. And uh, oh, that's very kind of them. They've said that the channel is what got them into Magic Online. So yeah, big thank you to my opponent. We're going to get another game going now. I don't know if you're going to see that one straight away. But hey, win or lose, I am going to show my opponent's, uh, my opponent's game here. So let's get on with it. Alright, I don't know if you have just seen me play against this player with my Yarrick Lands Matter deck, or if you saw it last week, but I've just played against this opponent and they very, very graciously sat through a massive stack and allowed me to show it to all of you, so I said that I'd play another game with them straight away and see if we can get something fair on the go. And I say fair, but I've got a Mana Crypt in my opening hand. Don't think I'm going to make use of it though, in all fairness. Probably just get into Obnixilis as soon as possible. So let's just get down a tapped breeding pool and pass over to my opponent. They have decided to switch to Krenko, Tin Street Kingpin. That is 3 mana for a 1-2 goblin. When it attacks, put a plus counter on it and create a number of goblin tokens equal to his power. Uh, yeah, we'll just go for Bayou into the Lightning Greaves. And then we'll probably go Mana Crypt, Command Tower, Obnixilis next turn. Or maybe we go in for Yarrick first and then Obnixilis the turn after and make a land. Because this will have our opponent lose 3 life per land that comes into play. But that'll be doubled up by Yarrick, so hit our opponent for 6 on landfall. Might be pretty good. Goblin Bombardment from our opponent. Yeah, let's go for Command Tower... Mana Crypt. And apologies again to my opponent if this turns into a really one-sided game. It's not by design, it's just sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're not. And 
Mana Crypt goes off and we'll see if we help our opponent along any by getting a Lightning Bolt here. Nope, we won the flip. It really is our lucky day here, apparently. Let's go for the Obnixilis and then play an Island. That will trigger the Obnixilis twice, therefore putting three plus counters on him twice and draining our opponent for three twice as well. And I don't really see what our opponent's going to do to get out from under this. Um, yeah, having haste and a mana crypt in hand is, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Plus we've got a toxic deluge to get rid of a bunch of goblin tokens. So yeah, it's just been really unlucky again for our opponent. A madcap skills, the enchanted creature gets... Plus three, plus zero, and Menace. And a Titan Strength. Yeah, this is a really fine-tuned one versus one deck, it looks like. Krenko is no doubt going to swing in and create a bunch of Goblin Tokens here. Like I said, we do have the Toxic Deluge. And they've got the Goblin Bombardment, so they can sacrifice their Goblins. And deal a bunch of damage to us. Luckily, I think we've got enough life. Without the Mana Crypt, I'm not too sure we would have beaten our opponent here. Because they have actually done a hell of a lot with only three mana. So I think we've been very lucky to get into our Mana Crypt. We do get bolted there. Let's go for Wasteland. And that is six damage onto our opponent again. And then all we have to do is go for Nature's Law. That was another really good draw. And we will hit our opponent for 6 again. Obnixilis really good in this deck. Yeah, I was just saying to my opponent that we wouldn't have had a chance without the Mana Crypt there because we would have been way too slow. Uh, these would have been swinging in at us next turn, created a bunch more zombies and then probably just sack the whole board and kill us off with Goblin Bombardment. There were... Oh yeah, Ruination definitely would have hurt us. If they could have gotten a land and then Ruination next turn, that definitely would have gotten us. Yeah, so we were just really lucky with our draws there. Mana Crypt in the opening hand and then getting down Obnixilis and our commander for a bunch of direct damage. Or direct life loss, technically. Now that was a pretty quick one, so I imagine you're going to see the two games side by side. Big, big props to my opponent because they played through thick and thin there and uh, they were in more thick than they were thin. So, yeah, that was uh, it's just lucky on my part that got into a really fast start in the first game and then had Mana Crypt in the opening hand this game and that just catapulted us into being able to jump ahead a couple of turns, really. And, yeah, without that, we definitely would have lost that one because our opponent got... A hell of a lot going with not very much mana. Anyway, big thanks to Tarek77 again. Um, be sure to show us your deck lists if you feel like doing that, because I'm sure people would like to see those. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.